Hello everyone and welcome back to another how-to episode of Title Tuesdays here at Independence Title. We are the premier title company here in South Florida. Why? Because we take the time to invest in our staff, to invest in educating our community on some of the issues that we see. So as always with all of our episodes, I'm assuming you've already subscribed below, which is how you're watching this video. If you haven't subscribed below, take a second, look down and click that little red subscribe button. Did you click it? All right, looks like you did, great. So now we're gonna move on and today's episode is going to talk about how to navigate through escrow disputes. You know, escrow disputes a lot of times we, we're seeing come up and, and it's when two parties have conflicting demands on money that is put in escrow. So a lot of times the buyers are, are putting up a, maybe a $1,000 deposit, a $5,000 deposit, or sometimes there, there's a larger deposit on a larger home, $50,000, and there are disputes. Your job as a real estate professional, and I cannot be more clear when I do these trainings, is you need to have a clear timeline of your contract. It is your role and responsibility to make sure you're reviewing the contract and you are understanding all of the dates. So what are some of the common dates that we're seeing that come up that question escrow deposits and whether they are liquidated damages to a seller for breach of contract or the buyer has the right to get out? Number one is understanding what is the effective date of your purchase and sale agreement. I teach realtors to sit down with a folder where they keep their contract and keep a list of important dates, the dates that are coming up and try, if you're going to back out of a deal, try and do it the day before so there's never a question. So what you need to do is first, understand what is the effective date of your contract. Well, you all know because you're real estate professionals that that is the date the last party signed the contract. Great, right? They signed, they initialed everything, that contract is now valid from today moving forward. But wait, how do you count days? Is it Monday to Friday? Is it calendar days? Is it business days? Do you know which contract you're using and do you know that there are different contracts with different days? Some of them talk about business days which means you have to understand Monday to Friday and if there are holidays that fall in between and whether they're banking holidays that they count towards business days or they don't. Or is it just simple calendar days where it's very easy to follow the days in numerical order? That's the second thing you need to know. The third thing is understanding when are your deposits due? One of the changes they made in the contract quite some time ago was talking about deposit due three days after acceptance of the contract, which is great. People always used to want that money in ahead of time and I always say, why would someone put a deposit up on a house they don't even have under contract? So now you're able to put that deposit up within three days of acceptance and then the next deposit is gonna be due usually within 10 days. So those are gonna be your next two important dates to make sure you get that deposit in because if you as the buyer, for whatever reason, do not put up your deposit, you are in breach of your contract. As always, we're not attorneys, we're not giving you legal advice, we're telling you some of the pitfalls that we see that kill deals or, or cause sellers that may have a backup offer to say, you know what, I'm canceling, I'm taking the deposit and I'm gonna to sell to the new buyer for more money. And they have every right to do so if the buyer was in breach of contract. So your role as a buyer's agent is to make sure your client is not in breach of contract. So let's fast forward typically 10 to 15 days into the contract we have what's called the inspection period. Inspection period now encumbers lien search matters. So it is the job of the buyer to make sure there's a lien search ordered. It is the job of the buyer to make sure they raise any permit issues, any code issues, any city issues, any association issues within the inspection period unless you use that clause we talked about that was drafted by an attorney here in South Florida that excluded those matters from the inspection period. We just had a deal the other day where the client came in and was trying to back out. The buyer was trying to back out of the deal. The seller said, uh-uh. It was because there was an open permit for many years ago that the seller said, you're buying it as is. I'm not resolving it. You had your inspection period to cancel the deal. And they had every right to do so because permit matters, code matters, city matters was not excluded from the inspection period. Let's fast forward 30 to 45 days later. So you've had your first deposit, your second deposit, you've had your inspection period, and one of my favorite ones is the financing contingency. 
Understand that the process is gonna be changing with the new contract that comes out in April. We're gonna have a lot of trainings leading up to that, to what the changes are. Part of that has to do with, you need to make sure when your loan approval is due. If you do not provide your loan approval, there is a chance you could be waiving your contingency where before in the contract, and we're gonna to wait to see all the final changes once they're adapted, but the way the contracts are now is if you as the buyer do not provide your loan approval to the uh, seller, it simply just continues to extend until at which point you come in and provide it or they request it and say, hey buyer, you're past your, your financing contingency. Either give me a loan approval to waive the financing contingency or I'm canceling your contract. So again, it's very, very important to understand how to navigate the financing contingency when it comes to a closing. So now once you've canceled your financing contingency, you know you're ready to close, it's now time to make your way forward to that closing table. The lender's gonna fund the deal or maybe you're a buyer uh, and, and you're, you're gonna be paying cash for the property. And the only other issues we talk about are escrow disputes. What I wanna end with is explain to you, and we get the question asked all the time, if the buyer and the seller do not agree on a contract, so if you're the realtor, or you're the buyer or seller yourselves, if you have conflicting demands and your contract does not specifically state that let's say like a lot of the investor contracts or if the buyer does not close for any reason with the exception of clear and marketable title, the deposit will be immediately released to the seller as liquidated damages without any repercussions to the buyer, the seller, the realtors, the title company. Which means that if you don't close for whatever reason, we cannot take that money and disperse it. If you're dealing with a standard buy-sell contract, just because you as the buyer are in default, or if the seller was in default, we are not allowed to just say, make a judgment call and release the money. It needs to either go before a mediator or it needs to go to small claims court and we need to have a court order to release that money. And that gets very costly. So I always tell people, negotiate. If you know as the buyer you were in default and the seller's not willing to give you your deposit back, negotiate a settlement with them. Say, you know what, 50 cents on a dollar, I'll release 50% to you and then I'll get 50%. I'm sorry I wasn't able to close. But it's important. The how-to episode of today was how to navigate escrow disputes because more times we're seeing a lot of escrow disputes coming up simply because there was not a clear understanding of how the contract works. We've talked about in other episodes with investor contracts where contract A needs to match contract B, so there's no difference in terms, so you don't have any surprises. So I hope you learned something new how to save your buyer their escrow deposit because what happens is if they lose their deposit, they're coming after you. They're gonna blame you for it. You would never want that. One bad review can take your business down. So you wanna make sure you're protecting the best interest of your clients. Make sure they get their deposit back. Make sure you're covering all of the um, time sensitive contingencies within this contract. So as always, thanks for watching another episode of Title Tuesdays. Don't forget to subscribe below and we look forward to seeing you at the closing table.